friends. God bless you. Would you remain standing, please? <laughs> I want you to sing Amazing Grace tonight. Praise God. Is it warm enough in here for you? Is it too warm? If you're comfortable, let me see your hand. Well, I don't want you to get too comfortable. I just don't want you to freeze. I want you to sing it with all your might tonight. I want you to turn your volume up so everybody in Ware County will know we're having church. If you're not ashamed of Jesus, raise your hand. If you're standing with someone that's not singing as loud as you think they ought to sing, will you hit them in their side with your elbow? Wake them up, let them know we've started church here tonight. Praise God. Brother Herb, I want you and Brother Sam both to lead this, and I want everybody out there to sing with all your might. The first and last stanzas. Make it ring out. Amazing. Let me see your hand. That's what I thought, and that's the way it sounded. We're going to have to repent and do our first works over tonight. I believe you can sing better than that. Some of you are still too full of turkey to gobble tonight. But I want you to really open your heart and your soul and sing Amazing Grace like it ought to be sung. Sounded more like humming and singing to me. Not the sorest I've ever heard Amazing Grace done. Sing it again now and let's sing it right. God, I see a number of ministers still in the audience. I wish you would bring your chair and come up here and sit with me tonight on the platform. All the ministers, I want you to come as we sing this beautiful song, Power of the Blood, and start with the chorus. Everybody now.
just uh, pray God for you. Thank God. God bless you. You may be seated. I brought along with me tonight a few copies of our book that I wrote primarily for our young people. Youth should know. And I have dealt with a number of things in this book. How young people should dress, things they can do for entertainment that are wholesome and that the Bible approves. I talk about dating, sex, marriage. And every young person ought to read this book. Some churches have used this book like they did the one I talked about last night for study courses for young people. Your parents ought to read it. It will help you considerably in dealing with the problems that you're facing as parents. This book sells for a dollar and I'll be happy to autograph your copy at the end of the meeting tonight. So I'm going to ask the ushers, they have a supply right there with them, and I'm going to ask them to move among the audience as quickly as possible. Have your dollar ready, raise your hand, and keep it raised until the men of God see you and are able to serve you tonight. We have a picture of the tent that I had here in Way Cross a number of years ago in uh, this book as well, in the crowd. Just raise your hand as the ushers come and they'll be happy to serve you tonight. And I trust that we have enough to serve everybody. I'm afraid that we may not have, but uh, we'll take care of as many as we possibly can. While the ushers are offering these books to you tonight, I would like to express appreciation, deep appreciation, to the sponsoring pastors of this meeting for calling off their services through the week and for being a part of this meeting. Thank God for men of God who believe in the power of God. You don't uh, find pastors like these everywhere you go, but I do thank God in this way cross area we have men of faith and men of God who believe in the power of God, who preach and teach and practice this very same anointing in their local churches. That's why their churches are growing. I believe for this gospel is preached with power, needs are met, and lives are changed, that people are going to come. They'll drive for miles around. How many believe that? But uh, they don't want to waste their time in an old, dead, dry, formal church. Some churches ought to ride Ichabod on the outside because the glory of the Lord hath departed from that place. If somebody said, praise the Lord, a half a dozen people would turn around to see who in the world had enough victory to say praise the Lord in that church. Now say amen if you think you can. Praise God. But these men are men of uh, great spiritual stature, and I want them to come and give to you tonight just their name and the church that they pastor. They'll be coming back probably tomorrow night or Saturday night and giving the time of their services. Let me make a very important announcement and I'd like for you to help me to get the word to everybody. We will begin the service here Saturday night at 5 o'clock. So please remember that and Hold as many people as you can and let them know that the service will start at 5 o'clock Saturday. I'll have to do that in order to get my plane from Jacksonville back to Washington. As you know, I'm a pastor in that city and I must get back for my services Sunday. And I am pleased and honored to have on this platform tonight Brother Lamar McDaniel, who pastors in Baltimore, Maryland. All of you know him. He is from this area, preached all over this country, led hundreds and perhaps thousands to the Lord through this area. People been saved and healed and filled with God's Spirit through his ministry. And he has a great church in Baltimore. And we're neighbors. And I'm happy to have Brother Lamar McDaniel here. And Brother Lamar, would you please come and greet the folks and then I'd like for the other pastors to come and give their announcements. 
Thank you, Brother Larry. You should have told him I had the greatest church in Maryland. You used to have. <laughs> I'll let you play in Washington if you let me play in Maryland. This is a lot to be here tonight uh, to be in the service of Brother Larry. We've been very good friends for a long time, and now we're competitors. He's taking the southern area, and I'm taking the northern frontier. So, with the help of the Lord, great things are being accomplished. And I can say, truthfully, from the depths of my heart, I'm thrilled beyond words at the tremendous success that is being had in uh, his ministry in the Washington area, an astronomical growth, something that should have been done a long, long time ago, but better late than never. Now, we're just delighted to be with you in the service. We're looking forward to a great visitation of the Spirit. We came down to, uh, we got here the, about noon today to meet my dad, who is bent fast and, and uh, not in good condition at all. And just as soon as we got through eating dinner, we got a call from Baltimore that my wife's daddy, who is living with us, who is 92, passed away at 3 o'clock this afternoon. So I told Brother Larry he's honored to have us come and be with him in this service. Pray for the uh, for the family. We will not be able to go back to the school to Florida to the funeral, but we thought we would be with you tonight and rejoice with you. And we're trusting God to save souls and heal bodies and get people ready for heaven. Jesus is soon coming. And what we do, we must do quickly. And there are people whose lives are hanging in the balance here tonight. For the grace and the help of God, we'll get you over on Victor's side and get you ready. Hallelujah! Get you ready to go up with us. He may come tonight, and if he does, we'll say goodbye, world, I'm going home. Amen. Uh, Brother Howell, would you come and then call the other pastors? Brother Howell, pastor of Brunel Street Church of God here in Waycross. If you don't have a home church, come be with us at Brunel Street Church of God. Brother Peacock, Genoa Street. I'm Frank from Peacock, pastor of Genoa Street Church of God, and I'm just proud to be part of the church God team here in Waycross. You come and visit with us, we'll be glad to have you here. Brother Andy Vitti from Abundant Life in Blackshear. He already told you who I was. <laughs> Andy Vitti, Abundant Life Christian Center in Blackshear. Brother Gilbert. Brother Lowry has blessed Brother Vitti's car while he was here. He's been driving it. My name is Gilbert. I'm from uh, West Side. That's out on 84, going west. Come be with us. Be keep be with us at the church. Get the radio on every morning at WECL at 9 o'clock. God bless you. Andy Hickok. I'm out of Dixie Union. Praise God. And God's doing great things out there. We're uh, on fire for the Lord. And we're excited about this camp revival. Glory to God. We, if you believe in the power of God, come on out of Dixie Union. Where, uh, we believe in old time shouting. Praise God. Old time victory. Praise God. <laughs> Terry Carter, I'm the pastor of Key Life Christ Center, also in Blackshire. We we'll ask you if you're as Brother Andy said, there are the others. If you're in Blackshire, you don't have a church, we'd we'll be glad to have you come be with us and worship the Lord where we worship and praise God as the word says to do it. Brother Barber. Jack Barber, and I'm Pastor North Way Cross, US one door. If you don't find a church in this town, it's your fault. Or Brother Steve. Hey, Hunter Church of God, Harrison Steve. He shouldn't have been talking, should he? Lift up your hands right now. Give the Lord a praise offering. Praise God. Don't you love Jesus tonight? If you love him, shout his name with me three times. Jesus! 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 Hallelujah! Let me tell you about Jesus. He's my Savior. Hallelujah! Let me tell you about Jesus, what a wonderful Savior. Let me tell you about Jesus, how He saved my soul and He made me whole. He took away my burden and He took away my sorrow. Let me tell you about Jesus, how He gladly saved my soul. I went to the altar. I knelt down to pray. I felt the Holy Spirit coming down my way. My soul began to tremble and the joy began to grow. Let me tell you about Jesus, how he gladly saved my soul. It's a wonderful feeling, you know what I'm singing about? It's a wonderful time. Such a wonderful feeling Just to ease your mind Sweetest joy you'll find My heart is 
Thank you. You may be seated. Praise God. We had a tremendous meeting here last night, didn't we? How many are here tonight for your first time in this meeting? Let me see your hand. Well, what I want to know is, where have you been? Friend, we have really been having camp meeting out here every night. Before I preach tonight, I want a lady that has had a tremendous impact upon my life to stand. As a matter of fact, the first sermon I ever preached was in her husband's church. I was just a little fella. I've been preaching about all my life. I was 15 years old, and he believed in me and gave me my first opportunity to preach. Sister Scott, would you please stand? She is here from Barnesville, Georgia. God bless you, Sister Scott. Hallelujah. And her grandson, Brother Billy Wayne Sykes, is a powerful preacher and a great evangelist. And you pastors would really be blessed to have his ministry in your church. I don't know how many received the Holy Ghost here last night. Just about everybody we laid hands on receive the power of the Holy Ghost. Aren't you glad God is pouring out His Spirit in these last days? Thank God. These are great days. Thank God for the privilege of being alive in this day. I believe that this is the generation that will see the Lord's Christ appear in the clouds of glory. I'm going to preach on that tomorrow night, the Lord willing. I want to show you from God's Word that Jesus is coming back in this generation. Unless you die prematurely, you will be alive when the trumpet sounds. The Bible teaches that when Jesus comes back, there will be a generation of live saints on the face of this earth that will never see death. will suddenly be changed in the moment of the twinkling of an eye. And the power that we've been feeling around here is the power of God that's going to do that. He's the one that's going to make the transaction. And I'll tell you, I'll feel it in my soul tonight. If you know he's here tonight, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise God. I want to speak to you for a few moments tonight from uh, a subject that I feel is so necessary and important. I want to talk about the kingdom of supernatural beings the kingdom of supernatural beings and I'll read a number of scriptures tonight turn with me please to the 8th chapter of Luke and I'll begin reading at verse 22 and I'll begin reading while you're trying to locate it any of you having trouble finding it is in the New Testament. Luke chapter 8, beginning at verse 22, and I'll read selected verses tonight. Now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples, and he said unto them, Let us go unto the other side of the lake, and they launched forth. Verse 26, And they arrived at the country of the Gadareans, which is over against Galilee, and when he went forth to land, there met him out of the city a certain man which had devils long time and wear no clothes, neither abode in any house but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him and with a loud voice said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God most high? I beseech thee, torment me not. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For all times it had caught him, and he was kept bound with chains and in fetters, and he broke the bands and was driven of the devils into the wilderness. And Jesus asked him, saying, What is thy name? And he said, Legion, because many devils or demons were entered into him. And they besought him that he would not 
commands them to go out into the deep. And there was there a herd of many swine feeding on the mountain. And they besought him that he would suffer them to enter into them. And he suffered them or permitted them. Verse 33. Then went the devils out of the man and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the lake and were choked. When they that fed them saw what was done, they fled and went and told it into the city and in the country. Then they went out to see what was done and came to Jesus and found the man out of whom the devils were departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. They also, which saw it, told them by what means he that was possessed of the devils was healed. Then the whole multitude of the country of the Gadarenes round about besought him to depart from them. For they were taken with great fear. And he went up into the ship and returned back again. Now the man out of whom the devils were departed besought him that he might be with him, but Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to thine own house, and show how great things God hath done unto thee. And he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. Ephesians chapter 6. Please look at Ephesians chapter 6. And I'll read two or three verses from that great chapter. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore. Would you please stretch your hand out toward me tonight, and ask God to touch me with a special anointing of His Holy Spirit. Father, we come to you in this sacred hour tonight to lean upon you, to wait upon you, and to be used of God tonight. Come here and stand by your servant this night, O oh God. Touch my mind that I may think clearly. Touch my tongue that I may speak freely and distinctly the words of everlasting life. Don't let one word fall from these lips tonight unless it is anointed and ordained of God. But as your word goes forth, O oh Lord, intercept it by the Holy Spirit and convey it by the wings of the angels to every heart and write it indelibly and eternally and everlastingly upon every soul. Don't allow your word to return unto you for it tonight. But Lord, give mighty victory, give mighty deliverance in this place tonight. And all that you do, we'll be careful to praise you and honor you in Jesus' name. Would you lift your hands and let us praise his name together. Praise him, church. Praise him with all of your heart and soul tonight. Glory to Jesus. Give praise to his holy name. Magnify his name tonight. For his name is worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Bible teaches conclusively and unequivocally that there is a realm of supernatural beings. From Genesis to Revelation, there are many references to the supernatural, to the world of the supernatural. And it is clear that the spirit world is inhabited by spirit beings of which there are two distinct classes. 
And the Bible calls these two groups good and evil. And the Bible gives to us many names for the good spirits as well as for the evil spirits. The Bible calls the good spirits angels, cherubims, seraphims, and other such names. And the Bible calls the evil spirits or the bad spirits powers, principalities, rumors of darkness, wicked spirits, dominions, thrown spirits in prison. He calls them fallen angels, seducing spirits and devils, and many other names. Before I talk about evil spirits or demons or powers or principalities, I want to point out to you that the Bible teaches that there are angels of God who are ministers of the Lord God Jehovah. And they work in cooperation with God and with the people of God and His church to carry out the work of our Heavenly Father. If you believe that, say amen tonight. The Bible gives reference to over 300 scriptures throughout the sacred and holy writ that give direct references to the work, to the nature, and to the ministry of the angels of the living God. The Bible tells us that the angels of the Lord are without number. Hallelujah. I believe when a person gets saved that God assigns at least one angel to that person to go along beside him, to protect him, to guide him, hallelujah, and to work for his benefit. Did you know you can commission your angel to do things for you? You need to recognize the presence of the angels of God, hallelujah and take advantage of the ministry that God has provided through the angels of the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah, praise God. In talking about this innumerable host, Daniel said, a fiery stream is shooting, came forth from before him. Thousands, thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times the books were open. In this one event, Daniel, the prophet of the Lord, saw at least a hundred million angels of the Lord, like a fiery stream issuing out from the throne of Almighty God. And they stood there at the judgment when the books were open and the kingdoms of the earth marched before the Lord God Jehovah. Daniel saw at least a hundred million angels of the Lord God. And I want to tell you there is no shortage. And if you don't say amen, I will. Hallelujah. In the writer of Hebrews saw a greater number. He saw a number so great until it was impossible to calculate. You could put it in the finest computers of our day and still fall short. After the computers had spit out all the figures that they were capable of spitting out, praise God, the angels of God will still be marching forth. Hallelujah. At the fingertips and at the bidding of Almighty God and the saints of God to do the work of Almighty God. And I wish somebody would say praise God. Here's what the Word says in Hebrews 12, 22. Look at it with me tonight. Or write it down because I want you to look at these scriptures when you return home tonight. He says, But ye are come unto Mount Zion, unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable. That means that there are so many, I'm telling you, can't number them. An innumerable company of angels. Glory to God. Clouds of angels. Army after army. Regiment after regiment. Battalion after battalion. Of angels. Of the living God. Marshal for the primary and sole purpose of ministering the things of our Heavenly Father. 
I wish somebody would shout hallelujah. The angels of the Lord were present when Peter was set free from prison. He walked in with the master key that fit every, every lock in the jailhouse. Praise God. And unlocked the door in the inner cell from solitary and said, follow me, son. I've got the blueprints to this place and I know the way out. Praise God. And when they came to the big iron gate on the outside, he opened on his own accord. Hallelujah. And the angel of God said, Get over to the prayer meeting and tell them what the Lord God has done. He has sent me in answer to the prayer of those saints that have set you free. Glory to God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It was an angel of God on the top of Mount Moriah that arrested the hand of Abraham when he was about to take his son's life and offer him as a sacrifice unto the Lord. And he said, I've got a substitute call over here in the second Praise God. The angel of the Lord stood on board the ship in the middle of the Mediterranean when the ship was being tossed. And it looked like that Paul and everybody on board would be destroyed. An angel of God stepped on board and said, Fear not, for I have come from the throne of God and I bring you a message of deliverance. tell you my friends the angels of God work primarily and predominantly in the affairs of this universe can you say amen saints the angels of God excel in strengths they are not some little puny weakling or sissy they are the mighty mighty powerful angels of God that excel in might and in strength they're capable to handle any assignment that God should send them on can you say praise the Lord the Bible says bless the Lord and friends it's a good thing to bless God say amen And he said, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. You can get mighty close to heaven when you start praising God. I have spoken in church growth conferences all over this nation and outside this country. I've talked about the principles one step, one step, two, step, three, 
of the principles of church growth, but you want me to tell you the churches that are growing? The churches that are growing in these last days are churches that know how to praise God. Some churches remind me more of a mortuary than a sanctuary. They have a name that they're, that they're alive, but they're twice dead and plucked up with the roots. Same man, saints. The smell of death is never heard when you walk in there. It's so quiet and so dead, and, and the, and the uh, smell of death is everywhere. Somebody say amen, saints. The churches that know how to praise God are the churches that are growing. People want to be a part of something that has some life in it, has some victory in it. If my religion treated me like some people's religion treats them, I treated also a pet monkey and slip that pet monkey in somebody's back pocket so I can say I lost something. I say good riddance of a bad experience. Hallelujah! I want to tell you this old time religion to put a smile on your face and a joy in your soul and a song in your heart and a skip in your walk. You need to smile and tell your soul you're happy. Glory to God! Hallelujah! I believe if you've got old time religion, you're going to act like it. You won't go around like you've lost your best friend. I, I had that take declared bankruptcy. I want to tell you why I preach this joy in the service of the Lord. They even had it and they lost it. Praise God. Where the Lord lives. You want me to tell you where Jesus lives? You want me to tell you where the Lord God Almighty dwells? He dwells in the midst of the praises of His saints. There's where He lives. There's where He inhabits. You show me a saint know how to, knows how to praise God, and I'll show you where the Lord lives. You show me a church that knows how to praise God, and I'll show you where the Lord is. Praise God! Yes. Souls to be saved and the sick to be healed, and things that take place in that church. Glory to God, hallelujah. Oh, I'm praying that God to give us more pastors from this land that will know how to take the congregation by the hand and walk up the stairway of heaven and bow down before the Lord God, Jehovah, into the Holy of Holies and worship Him in spirit and in truth. Somebody say amen. Glory to Jesus. Raise your hand and wave it and shout hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Praise God Almighty. Hallelujah! The word says, bless the Lord. Glory to God. David said, that's what I'm going to do. He said, I'll praise Him in the morning, and I'll praise Him at noontime. I'll praise Him in my down sitting, and I'll praise Him in my uprising. Glory to God. He said, as a matter of fact, this whole universe ought to praise Him. He is the Lord God, your Creator. Praise God. He spoke you into me. And he said, let the stars twinkle and praise his name. Let the Milky Way praise him. Let Mars and Jupiter praise him. Let all the astronomy of the vastness of God's universe lift their voice like a mighty orchestra in harmony and praise and unison to the God of this universe. He said, let the sun praise him. Let the moon praise him. Glory to God! He said, let the trees clap their hands for joy and praise Him. Let the rivers praise Him. Let everything that swims through that channel of the sea praise Him. I was reading that the other day and I got happy. I got to shout it. I could see a big old shark swimming through the water and say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He said, let everything that swims through the channel of the sea praise the name of the Lord. Don't you know he's your creator? He made you by his own omnipotence. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He said, let the mountains praise him. He said, let the big old majestic mountains bow down before him and praise his name. And then he said, let the little mountains and the hills skip for joy. Can't you see these North Georgia mountains just skipping from one side to the other side? Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Fanatic! Oh, my brother, let this universe praise the name of the Lord. Then David got in tune and really got a mark and under divine inspiration, he said, praise him on the organ, praise him on the piano, praise him on the 
trumpet or the saxophone. Praise him on the drums. Praise him on the timbre. And then he said, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Everybody just praise him here tonight. Raise your hand. Let's see your hand and praise him. The only excuse you have for not praising him is not to be breathing. Glory to God, if you're breathing, say praise the Lord. If you're breathing, shout hallelujah. <laughs> oh, my Lord of heaven. If you love him, say amen, saints. And then he said, praise him, ye his angels that excel in strength. They said, thank you, I believe we will. And they bowed down before the Lord God, Jehovah, and day and night they said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is filled with his glory. I want to tell you one day, friend, you're going to praise him. He may be a cursing, swearing, agnostic, or infidel, but one day that tongue is going to be turned in to a praise for the Lord God. Oh, yes, my friend, you may not bow down now and worship him, but one day you're going to praise him. One day your tongue is going to sing the high praises of him that sits upon the floor. Hallelujah. One day your old proud knees are going to bow down before him. Before the majesty of the throne of the living God. And you're going to praise his name. Somebody say amen. Oh, the Ramarita, the Makuri, the Mahushataya. The time's coming when every tongue is going to confess that he's the Lord. Every tongue. I want to tell you, Mr. Brisbane is a believer right now. Five seconds after he closed his incidental eyes in death, that communist leader became a believer. I want to tell you, he believes there's a God. He believes there's a hell. He's a believer. And one day, one day, there are things for a laugh. One day, one is what it says. Rejoice! 
Push 
through the crowd in a hurry, brethren. You don't have to be nice about it. Push somebody out of your way and rush up here. I need you in a hurry. Praise God. In the name of Jesus. Please hurry. I need 15, at least 15 of you that have come up here tonight. God bless you. Let them right through here. Let them right through. Praise God. Sister Mate Daniel, I talked about the Holy Ghost being a comforter last night. I told him about the time that I was in North Dakota. I believe your mother and dad were there that night when my mother and father were killed and the Holy Ghost was a comforter to me. He's going to be a comforter to you tonight. She just lost her dad today. God's going to comfort her. The blessed Holy Ghost is going to do his office work tonight. You believe the same man, saints? Oh, hallelujah. I want you that are standing here to look upon my face. Turn that speaker toward the crowd here just a little so they can hear me. That's fine. I want you that are standing here to look upon my face now. Friend, if I have ever in all my life Oh God, it's the morning. I feel it permeating through every fiber of my being tonight. You want to have what you came after. Brother Sears, you want to be filled with the Holy Ghost, don't you? God saved him here last night. The Holy Ghost is on him right now. He's been filled with the Spirit. Lay hands on him. Receive the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, Jesus is here. The Holy Ghost is here. God Almighty is on this place tonight. Oh, Yamako Yamaka Shata Tamata Taya. Sulamaki Sulamaka Shataya. In a few moments, we're going to lay hands on you. And when we touch it, it's going to happen. Brother, it's going to happen tonight. You hear what I'm saying? You're going to get what you come after tonight. God's not going to send you away hungry and empty. Thank God. He's going to give you what you came after tonight. Oh, thank God. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Praise God. Right now, I want you to get on your knees real quick and raise up your hands and look up to Jesus. Look up to Jesus. Tell the Lord what you want. Tell the Lord what you want. All right, saints, you that are standing in the aisles, I want you to push right on through the crowd. Men of God, step off this platform and walk down there and stay with somebody. Don't just touch them and go somewhere else. Lay hands on them and stay with them until it happens. Saints, come on through the crowd. Praise God. Please, push right on through the crowd. Don't just stand there in the aisle. Push on up here to the front. All right, brother, step off the platform. Get right down there. Lay hands on them tonight. I'm going to ask everyone out there tonight to make an altar right where you're standing. Will you slip off your chair? Get on your knees. Let's make an altar from one end of this tip to the other tonight. Thank you. God bless you. Get on your knees. Pour out your soul to God. Pray, folks. Pray, folks. Pray, folks. Pray, 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 pray. Oh, glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus.
see what God Almighty is doing here tonight. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God has sent revival to the cross. He told me to tell you to take this back to your church. Wherever you're from, and it's Holy Ghost revival is going to spread all over South Georgia. That's right. Glory to the Jesus. Praise God. Go to Sam. What about it? Your husband just received the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, it's happening here tonight. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. What's he done for you, son? What's he done for you? Raise your hands and praise God for what he's done for you tonight. Praise <laughs> God. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Praise God. Bring him up here to me. Praise God. Bring him up here to me. Praise God. What do you need from God, sir? Sir, say it loud. I need the Holy Ghost. I need the Holy Ghost. God's going to fill me. In the name of Jesus, when I lay hands on you, receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Oh, Praise God. Sister, what do you want God to do for you? That's largely because God is ready to give you the desires of your heart. Raise your hands and praise God tonight. Come up here, Charlie. This is God's night for you. Hurry. Let him through. Praise God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Stand on your feet and raise your hands. God wants to baptize him with the Holy Ghost and fire tonight. Raise your hands in the name of Jesus. Somebody praise God tonight. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Praise God. What's He done for you tonight, sister? What has He done? What has He done for? Glory to the Holy Ghost. Raise your hands and give the Lord a clap offering tonight. Praise God. The Holy Ghost, raise your hands, church. Suddenly we lay hands on you now. Give him your tongue. The Holy Ghost is trying to come in. Lay hands on him down there. Glory to Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. You know, church, I've never been in a revival like this. I traveled 17 years straight in revival crusades. I got past the North Cleveland. I was out somewhere preaching the good part of the time in short meetings and rallies and while I was in the general offices every weekend I was somewhere in crusades or camp meetings or conventions but this is the most unusual meeting I've ever been in my life I haven't been able to finish a sermon yet as a matter of fact I haven't been able to get past the first point as a matter of fact most of the time I haven't gotten through the first point of the message and the thing will explode the Lord God was giving his angels to fill this place. The blessed immaculate man of glory walking up and down these aisles, pitching out his hands. I want to tell you, you can have whatever you came after tonight. 
This place is trouble flooded with God's glory. My God, he's lifted the flood gate tonight. I said he has lifted the flood gate tonight. And his power is flooding all this place. I want you to do right now what the Holy Ghost has impressed me to do. I believe the Holy Ghost is on you in such a measure. And on whomsoever you lay your hands, God shall give them a miracle. He said the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And I believe you can pray the prayer of faith tonight. What I want to do is, in Jesus' name, I believe you're going to get it. Turn around in the body, all over the skins. And lay your hands on the person's hand on your side. This change your heart. going to do for you, sister? 
Jesus can heal this woman of cancer tonight. You believe God can do it? How many believes He's going to do it? Look up here at me, sister. When the doctor shakes her head and say that chemotherapy or anything else is not going to help, then Jesus says, I will be made whole. the streak of healing power falls through her heart. Be healed, sister, from head to toe. Jesus lift out of her cancer. With her let it die. Let it pass from her, Jesus. I declare a miracle in Jesus' name.